This evening, peaceful protests stemming from a misleading information devolved into a riot. Ministry of Health seeking to procure Pfizer and Moderna vaccines for the younger population. Minor lost his life in a mining pit caving along the Cuyuni River. In the region, Haiti unrest demands for the return of former President Aristide. And internationally, horrific tragedy, 46 people found dead inside a bantam truck. Greetings and welcome to another edition of Channel 2 Headline News Updates. I am Bibi Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. The media's major responsibility in conveying news to the public is to gather and report news that is factual, fair, honest, accurate, unbiased, and non-critical. Today, the nation got a first-hand view of when the, that responsibility is taken lightly. After obtaining false information from an online social media outlet that the police officer who shot and killed 25-year-old Quinton Bacchus was freed on bail, family, friends, and concerned citizens took to the East Coast public road in what started as a peaceful protest for justice. Quinton Bacchus was shot and killed by a rag of the Ghana police force after he was allegedly trying to sell an illegal gun. The protest began sometime around 8 a.m. this morning at the Golden Grove public road and continued along the east coast as protesters blocked the carriageway with wood, tires and any debris and garbage they could put their hands on. Meanwhile, the Ghana police force issued a statement urging persons to desist from this illegal act and clear the roadway. They debunked the false claims being made that the policeman involved in the shooting death of Quinton Bacchus was released from police custody. They further stated that the police rank in question is under open arrest and confined to the police headquarters since the matter is still under investigation. However, this did not quell the protesters as they reached the Monrepo market and began blocking the dual carriageway and setting fire to the crates and other items they used to block the roads. <laughs> Recognizing that the protest was getting out of control, President Dr. Irfan Ali took to social media to plead with the demonstrators to allow the law to take its course. Fellow Guyanese, especially those on the East Coast corridor, I returned uh, last night to Guyana and this morning I saw the action on the East Coast Public Road in relation to the death of uh, Mr. Bacchus. As you're aware, this is a matter that occurred some time ago in which the police is accused of using a excessive Force that resulted in the death of Mr. Bacchus. Based on the laws and in order to ensure an impartial investigation, the necessary sections of the Constitution that provides for the Police Complaint Authority to supervise an investigation <clears throat> in conjunction with the OPR must kick in. I'm advised that that process has commenced and that process has made tremendous progress. I'm for the advice that very early in the new week, the Police Complaint Authority, uh, retired Justice Ramla, the chair, would be in a position to present their findings and investigation uh, based on investigation to the DPP. I'm urging the residents who are on the road to please stick to the facts. Do not be misled by any social media posting or any information that is not verified. For example, what triggered this is a news item that the police who are implicated in this were released. That very news agency I've seen now has apologized for that misleading release. They have apologized for putting the wrong information out there, as this is far from the truth. I have been advised that not only is that police in custody, but there is a second police in custody who is assisting with the investigation. We must allow the system and the institution to work and complete their responsibility. Nevertheless, the president's plea seemed to have fallen on deaf ears. Just moments after the speech was aired, looting and vandalism at the Monrepo market was reported. 
Photos and videos started circulating on social media of a minibus and wooden stars that were set on fire and vehicles were vandalized. Meanwhile, the family of Quinton Baca said while they joined the call for justice for the young man, they do not condone the damaging of private and public property or disorderly behavior. Good afternoon. We are here protesting peacefully and we are here to send a message. We are not a part of no robbery. Our son was killed, a police officer killed him, six bullets. We are not here to lime and party and rob anyone. No robbing. No robbery. No robbing we are nobody. not a part of it. We are protesting peacefully and for we justice. Any robbing of anyone. We done backers and we denounce any robbery. So please. So that's not that coming us. from us. Not us. Ranks of the Ghana Police Force and the Ghana Defense Force quickly responded to the area and the fires were contained. Members of the Ghana Police Force and the Community Policing Group, with the assistance of the Ministry of Public Works, were able to remove the roadblocks and allow the free flow of traffic along the East Coast. As the situation returned to normal, President Ali spoke with protesters at the Monrepo area. Right. And, and I want like to you, justice prevail. And I've made it very clear, I want justice for Mr. Bacchus, and I want justice for all those people who are robbed and beaten, all those persons who buses were born, who car were born, and justice must not deal only with the people who do it. Yes. With the intellectual authors who sit up behind a computer and a phone and spur on people every day in this country. My job is very simple in this country. It's to bring people together. That I see as my greatest job. We just need to a better bring people together and to unify this country. We just need a better guy, Mr. President. And I agree, and I you want understand? that. Meanwhile, the Minister of Home Affairs, Rufus and Ben, engaged the immediate family of Quinton Bacchus. Stick around after the break. Ministry of Health seeking to procure the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines for the younger population, and Minor lost his life in a mining pit cave in. But before that, here's the bridge retraction schedule. Traveling soon? Then come into John Lewis Styles on Waterloo Street and let's help you choose the right set of luggage. You can choose to buy three-piece luggage sets, or separate pieces, but the sets are always a better deal. Either available in soft poly, or ABS hard side material, with four-wheeled spinners, and in many colors too. Also available are carry-on luggage, computer bags, duffel bags, backpacks, travel pillows, blankets and lots more to make your trip enjoyable. John Lewis Styles simply different. Guyanese, now is our time. The most important challenge for us is to have good governance with a governing administration that is genuinely inclusive and rejects segregation and discrimination. Let us maximize the enormous oil patrimony now for our people in every way possible to significantly uplift the quality of life and infrastructure in Guyana. It is not the time to use our bonanza of oil resources as a catalyst to primarily quibble about climate change or better oil deals than other countries have. Guyanese oil resources per capita exceeds all other countries. Together, we must use this enormous tide of our oil resources to enrich, elevate, and empower Guyanese by continuously focusing on improving our government regulations, systems, and policies to accelerate benefits to our people across the 10 regions of Guyana. A message from Nigel Hines. Good, good girl forget things. Good. Problem, Granny. I want money for bar for those soldiers. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. They say. That when it hits you, it hits you. 
a feeling so strong that it's impossible not to give in to a juicy piece of KFC, to feel elevated by the aroma, and to free fall into its exciting flavor. Some call it love, attraction, desire. We call it KFC. Ignite your senses with KFC. Welcome back. A miner was killed when a mining pit along the Cuyuni River caved in, as the service explains. Another miner has lost his life while working in a mining pit. Rangs in the regional division 7 are investigating the death of a 23-year-old miner who lost his life when a mining pit caved in at Sand Hill Bagdam, Cuyuni River on Sunday, June 26, 2022. There is Akim Khan of Old Road Housing Scheme in Bartica, an owner of a dredging mining operation at Sand Hill. Inquiries reveal that around 4.30 p.m., Khan and his employee, a 25-year-old miner of Friendship East Bank Danara, were in a mining pit jetting at the time when the walls began to cave. Khan and his employee started to flee, but Khan's foot became trapped in the jetting hose donkey and sand and the sand smothered them the man raised an alarm which was heard by another employee together they began to dig for the victim after about 10 minutes khan's motionless body was discovered a report was made to the bartica police station the body was transported to the bartica region awaiting a post-mortem investigation investigations are ongoing Additionally, on June 13, 64-year-old Donald Gavaya, a gold miner from Region 8, Potaro Sifaruni, died due to injuries received when the mining pit he was working near at Mawakuba Bagdam caved in on him. Gavaya and three other miners were working in the sand mining pit at the time of the incident. According to police, the pit is around 60 feet in circumference and 70 feet deep. The Ministry of Occupational Safety and Health Department, in collaboration with the Guyana Geology and Mines Commission, had commenced investigation in several mining fatalities which occurred in the mining sector in the year 2021. For Channel 2 Headline News, Esther Sobers. Thanks, Esther. The United States Food and Drug Administration has recently given emergency use authorization for the immunization of children six months to four years old using the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine manufactured for this age cohort. On Monday, Minister of Health Dr. Frank Antony said that the ministry is currently seeking to procure vaccines for its younger population. Even as Ghana faces some challenges in acquiring vaccines for children, the ministry continues to collaborate with international partners to ensure citizens access the important jobs. We have started a process of trying to access the vaccine for the six months to four years age group and in fact um, we are right now trying to determine what quantities we will ask for. Um, so this week we will put in that order and hopefully in the next two months or so we should be able to get some of these vaccines for the six months to four, four years age group. On June 21st, the Center for Disease Control authorized the rollout of approximately 10 million doses to children in the United States. Dr. Anthony noted that studies have shown that the vaccine is very effective in boosting the immunity of these young population. Therefore, the ministry is making every effort in procuring the vaccines. Meanwhile, the health minister is urging pregnant mothers to get vaccinated, especially in the third trimester of pregnancy, as this will enable infants to develop antibodies that can protect them against the deadly virus. In terms of children who are just born and up to six months, one way of getting them protected is to make sure that the mothers during pregnancy, um, that they take their vaccines. And it has been shown that if mothers take their vaccine in the third trimester, that they would have, uh, their children would have enough antibodies to protect them over the next six months. So that's one of the ways that you can overcome that hurdle where there is no vaccine currently available, um, you know, from birth to six months. So that's uh, something that pregnant women should think about getting vaccinated during their pregnancy 
or making sure that their immune levels are what it should be and more specifically if they get vaccinated in the third trimester. The ministry has been vaccinating children aged 5 to 11 years old. To date, over 3,000 children have been inoculated with the first dose of the vaccine. Minister Anthony is appealing to the eligible persons to get their booster doses. He noted that some persons are being hospitalized, even those who were vaccinated with the primary vaccine. He reiterated that immunity drops approximately six months after vaccination. As such, persons need to get the booster shot. A toddler died after being hit by a car in East Kanji Burbies. As the service has more details. Police are looking into an accident that occurred on the Cane Field Public Road on East Kanji Burbies, which results in the death of four year old Daniel Major of 2nd Street, Islington Village, East Bank Burbies, on Sunday, June 26, 2022. According to police report, Moto Car HA900, driven by 21 year old Claudine McDonald of Good Bananen Land, was proceeding north along the Cane Field public road when the four year old Daniel Major, who was alone at the set time, attempted to cross from west to east and ended up in the path of the car. In an attempt to avoid hitting the four year old child, the driver applied the brakes and swerved left. Despite the driver's effort, the right side front of the car collided with the child. As a result of the collision, the child received injuries about his body. He was picked up by the driver in an unconscious condition and taken to the New Amsterdam Public Hospital, where he was admitted as a patient in the accident and emergency unit, suffering from a fractured rib. However, he subsequently died on June 27, 2022, at about 10.45 hours. The family of later major is still positive the tragedy of his passing. According to reports, the child was with his stepfather at the time of the incident. The man stopped to buy birthday presents for his one-year-old child, and Daniel was allegedly left alone in the vehicle. The child got out of the vehicle and attempted to cross the road. Daniel Major's body is at the hospital mortuary, where a post-mortem examination is being performed. The breathalyzer test resulted in a reading of 0% micrograms. For Channel 2 Headline News, Esther Sobers. Thanks, Esther. Don't go away after the break. Horrific tragedy. 46 people found dead inside an abandoned truck. And Zimbabwe hikes interest rates by 200% to tackle soaring inflation. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisum's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs, and carpets, bedroom, dining, and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs, and filing cabinets, outdoor benches, and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Carriverton, and Camp Street. Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Sooner or later you will have another power failure. Are you prepared for the next blackout? Some essential equipment such as security cameras, lights, internet, gate motors, and water pumps may stop working. How can you prevent the next blackout? InverterTech has an affordable solution for you. A strong UPS system which uses the latest inverter and solar battery technology to prevent blackout. We smartly calculate your average power demand so you don't spend more than you need to. Call 223-2233 for more information. When you need money, and you gotta get it fast. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 4 to 6 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231-7878 and 223-8955.
Traveling soon? Then come into John Lewis Styles on Waterloo Street and let's help you choose the right set of luggage. You can choose to buy three-piece luggage sets, or separate pieces, but the sets are always a better deal. Either available in soft poly, or ABS hard side material, with four-wheeled spinners, and in many colors too. Also available are carry-on luggage, computer bags, duffel bags, backpacks, travel pillows, blankets and lots more to make your trip enjoyable. John Lewis Styles. Simply different. Guyanese, now is our time. The most important challenge for us is to have good governance with a governing administration that is genuinely inclusive and rejects segregation and discrimination. Let us maximize the enormous oil patrimony now for our people in every way possible to significantly uplift the quality of life and infrastructure in Guyana. It is not the time to use our bonanza of oil resources as a catalyst to primarily quibble about climate change or better oil deals than other countries have. Guyanese oil resources per capita exceeds all other countries. Together, we must use this enormous tide of our oil resources to enrich, elevate, and empower Guyanese by continuously focusing on improving our government regulations, systems, and policies to accelerate benefits to our people across the 10 regions of Guyana. A message from Nigel Hines. Welcome back. Here now is Esther Sobers with today's regional and international news. Good evening. Here now is today's regional and international news. In Haiti, hundreds of supporters of the former president Aristide have gathered in the capital to demand his return. They are angry about his political instability and a worsening crime rate. Al Jazeera's Victoria Gatimbi reports. <laughs> This is a country without a functioning government. Its economy has collapsed, its streets are run by gangs, and violent crime and kidnappings have surged. These supporters of former President jean bertrand Aristide say only he can save Haiti. We've taken to the streets to appeal to President Aristide because it's him we want. We want Aristide to be the transitional president because people are suffering. Haiti is one of the poorest countries in the Western Hemisphere, with a long history of political turmoil. Haitians voted in their first free election in 1990, electing Aristide, but he was ousted in a coup less than a year later. After the assassination of President Jovenel Moïse last July, Ariel Henry took power. Henri has broad political support from the international community, but he's been criticized for saying he has no plans to step down until the country holds new elections. If the international community is to be a true ally of Haiti, we are demanding they collaborate with President Aristide to save us from crisis. Haiti is still struggling to recover from a devastating 7.2 earthquake that destroyed the southern tip of the peninsula last year. Crippling economic conditions are likely to worsen as the political crisis drags on. When Aristide was president, life wasn't so expensive. Rice and oil were cheap. Insecurity makes everyone afraid. I'm tired of it. We want Aristide to be the president of the transition. Supporters of Aristide say they'll continue to protest until they get the change they say the country so desperately needs. Victoria Gatenby, Al Jazeera. Internationally, at least 46 people have been found dead inside an abandoned trailer in the city of San Antonio, Texas. It appears to be one of the worst cases of migrant deaths in recent years along with the U.S.-Mexico border. Al Jazeera, Victoria Gatenby reports. The grim discovery was made in a remote area on the outskirts of San Antonio in Texas. A man working nearby heard a cry for help and saw a trailer with the doors partially open. Inside, there were dozens of bodies piled on top of one another. Temperatures in the area had reached 39 degrees centigrade on Monday. Those who survived, mostly young adults and children, were too weak to get out of the trailer. Patients that we saw were hot to the touch. They were suffering uh, from heat stroke, heat exhaustion, uh, no signs of water in the vehicle. It was a refrigerated tractor trailer. 
but there was no uh, visible working AC unit on that rig. The victims are believed to be migrants who crossed the U.S.-Mexico border looking for a better life. This appears to be one of the worst cases of migrant deaths in the U.S. in recent years. So the plight of migrants seeking refuge is always a humanitarian crisis, but tonight we are dealing with a horrific human tragedy. So I would urge you all to think compassionately and pray for the deceased, the ailing, the families. The trailer was found near a major highway that stretches all the way to the border with Mexico. San Antonio police have made arrests. We have three people in custody. We don't know if they are absolutely connected to this or not. Um, this investigation has been turned over to HSI. It is now a federal investigation. The migration crisis at the U.S. southern border is a problem for President Biden, whose approval ratings are low. Republicans are focusing on the issue ahead of the midterm elections in November. Human rights groups say the crisis is being politicized by both sides. In the meantime, migrants continue to cross the border, in this case with tragic consequences. Victoria Gatenby, Al Jazeera. And finally, Zimbabwe's central bank has raised its key interest rate to a record high of 200%. The increase in attempt to tame inflation that is running at more than 190%. Alzira Haru Motasa has more. A lack of confidence in Zimbabwe's dollar and soaring inflation is taking a toll on its people. The central bank is more than doubling interest rates from 80 to 200% from July the 1st, an attempt to rein in inflation. The finance minister hopes to boost market confidence, saying other currencies will still be used for the next five years. The government has clearly stated its, in, its intention of maintaining a multi-currency system based on the dual use of the US dollar and the Zimbabwe dollar in the main. But however, the market's lack of confidence in the multi-currency system uh, uh, is, is causing us challenges. And I want to assure you that this multi-currency system is here to stay into the foreseeable future. Inflation reached more than 191% in June. That's made life even harder for millions of people. Previous attempts by the government to stop a collapse of Zimbabwe's currency included a 10-day ban on bank lending. Economists here are divided on whether that worked. Officials say they'll now introduce gold coins into the market for individuals to store value. But some economists say this may not be practical. 49% of the population in extreme poverty, 7.9 million people who cannot live on a dollar 90 cents a day. They can even go to bed without eating. You have 70% of the rural population in poverty. So who is going to buy the gold coins? Government officials also plan to reduce taxes on fuel to curb price increases, as well as increase allowances for health workers and civil servants after unions rejected a 100% wage increase. But with soaring inflation, this may do little to help people facing a rising cost of living. Harumutasa Al Jazeera, Harare. That is it for today's regional and international news. Here now is your 3 minute forecast.
edition of Channel 2 Hana News Updates. Tune in on Wednesday at 7 p.m. for another episode. Be sure to subscribe, like, and follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other.